<laughs> okay, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have Crystal here. Crystal, would you like to briefly introduce your channel? Hi, um, I'm Crystal and I host the podcast Synchronic Saturdays with Megan Lavoda, who is an ENFJ and I am an ENFP. Okay, and hey, welcome. So today I actually want to talk about a topic that I personally don't have a lot of um, like understanding in. So I'm hoping that you can help me understand. Like, <laughs> what would you say is um, your relationship with like your inferior function SI and like roughly when do you become more aware of it? Well, so I've so I actually love talking about my SI. Um, so my understanding of it is really that like, so my first function is extroverted intuition because I am an ENFP, so I leave with NE. Mm -hmm. And so my, my inferior is introverted sensing, which is SI. So it's my fourth one. And basically, I think of my SI as directly feeding. And it's kind of like the life source of my NE. Like all, because SI is kind of like an archive of like my personal experiences. Yeah. And so everything that I have experienced translates directly to how I can see the world through this very like wide lens. Like it's kind of like reminds me of like how like a gas tank in a car very small mechanism in the context of the entire car, but it does hold the key to keeping the whole thing moving along. And that's how you see SI. Um, and in recent years, I really integrated mine by really understanding my body and how it reacts to intuition and just kind of having a better grasp of my physical needs and how they pertain to like going directly into how I can channel things even psychically. So yeah. Wow. So from my understanding, because I don't use um, SI, at least not like actively, um, I always hear people say that SI values like past experiences a lot. Mm -hmm. And there is like a, I, I don't know if this is true, but there's like a nostalgic um, element to it. So is that like true in your experience? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I think of it as I'm able to time travel very easily. And I have a memory where I can replay conversations and events word for word. So, wow. yeah. I've so, never experienced that. Yeah, like, for example, if someone said, do you ever feel like that song lyric, it reminds me of the song Firework by Katy Perry that's like, do you ever feel like a plastic bag? Mm -hmm. And so when I hear that, I hear the fact that they said that and they're about to say something about, like, their emotions, but I also hear the song from Katy Perry play in my head. So sometimes, and you just say, like, burst into song randomly it's because yeah. the memory of hearing that song is playing for them in their head it remind, it's like basically multiple realities are kind of happening at once and they're very much shaped by us being sometimes unable to forget the past mm -hmm. so i would right. say like me, like to me memories are very real to where time as we linearly see it I like n understand intellectually, but I can experience like regressing back in time if I want to. And it's kind of like all those like puns and all those theories that any users can make are all powered because they remember everything. It's like this like memory archive where you can play all this footage and you could remember the names of your best friend's sister's dog from fourth grade or like like something you read and like yeah so the memory thing was really handy in school i was not a good student but i did even less studying than people thought i did because i could remember everything like and you know to like a degree everyone remembers things a little bit differently but i'd say that most of the time everyone with any and si can remember details really well and because i can replay memories i remember details really well i could then use them to reference parallels and run hypotheses through my heads of like what events mean what their interpretations are because there's so many details to analyze and supplement so yeah yeah i feel like sometimes i can get a bit confused when i read about this like memory <laughs> thing I thought that i also have a good memory so sometimes i i guess that can lead to be people being mistyped because um a lot of infjs they may think that they are infps if they um, think like have nostalgic moments, which I do as well, quite a lot of times. Um, but I think the difference is more on the details because mm -hmm. I definitely don't remember details as yeah. well as 
by users. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, I can con I can contrast assign ni memories for you because a lot of INJs do have pretty decent memories. So I can like delineate that if you would like. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the way I see it is ni. Okay. Any IJ especially has a really good memory because they lead right. with an introverted perceiving function, whether that's an ISJ or INJ. The thing is, an ISJ remembers the details, the word for word. They can literally, like, remember the sensory things. An NI user will remember the big picture of the events, and because they remember the meaning so well, they can piece together probably what literally happened. But if they were to go, okay, first I was sitting there, and then I put my cup down, and then this happened, and then this, they wouldn't be able to do it sequentially, so sensorily. Yeah they would remember the big pivotal themes. Um, so I tend to think I tend to think of it as like an e and SI, we, we see the footage of like say a movie trailer, but we can't remember if the track is a scary one, a funny one, a happy one. So the interpretation of what happened, it's gonna vary, it's gonna be very fluid. For NI, they might not remember the actual literal footage, but they might remember the audio, and if it was like a sad audio or happy audio. So they remember different aspects of the same events. So between an oh. NI user and SI user, you could piece together virtually everything that ever happened, but they're gonna do it really differently. And I think that the definitions online maybe sometimes too vague to where yeah, anyone yeah. who has introverted perceiving would relate. Yeah, exactly. That's why I think, um, I mean, in the past, like obviously when I didn't get into the functions, I got like really confused because I was like a pretty nostalgic person as well. Um, because I do like, like you said, I do have a strong memory, but it's more, I guess it's not like more, it's not as detail oriented. It's more like, um, a big picture thing and I do remember very far into my childhood like certain pivotal moments I guess um, but definitely I'm not um, ever like good with details and I remember that one of the differences is that my ISFJ friend when she's studying she tends to like do a lot of like memorization work um, on like the dates of a specific events and like what actually happened and that was like her strength in history class but I couldn't do that I have to like think about the major events and kind of use that to help me to remember the details whereas she she does the details first and then use that to remember the big events so yeah that's like me too like I don't think of the pivotal events that like shaped me I just remember the because I'm an ENFP so I'm not an IJ yeah, at all, but like for me, yeah. for me, it's really marked by my FI. Like I'll be like, well, this was the moment that hurt the most for me, so I can replay that word for word and such. And these are the people that matter the most to me, or like this is like the emotional intention behind why I'm going to research these facts so I can recall things word for word. So it all, it, for me, it all comes from FI as well. So yeah. Right. So I'm wondering, do you have any like obstacles when it comes to like leaning into your SI? Or is it something that you feel like naturally just developed for you? For me, it was very intentional um, to work on my SI. And I think for most people, like life kind of ends up pushing you into where you develop your fourth function. Mm -hmm. Anyway, for me, I'm 25, so not that old, but like mm -hmm. I felt very, well, so I'm now like a working um, psychic consultant. Um, I'm helping a lot of people through my tarot readings, through basically, I guess, kind of like it's like coaching but more so I call it consulting like I've been doing a lot of that stuff and because that's a lot of energy to take in I was incentivized early on to try and integrate my understanding of my body because I'm the kind of person where like obviously because I'm an ENP I forget to eat but to the point where wow. like I can like mute out the feeling of hunger for like hours at a time like if I'm in distress I can even not even feel it like for example if someone hurts me very deeply, I will not be able to eat for like days sometimes. Oh, so, yeah. oh hi. Hello. Hi. We were talking about, uh, I was so, hi, Boonie. I'm Crystal. I'm also an ENFP. And I was talking to Tori about like how I forget to eat a lot when I am like sort of stuck in any land. And, or even if I'm too traumatized, I won't be able to like eat or feel hungry or anything. Anything. I'll just feel clogged. So, and so, like to go back to my point, um, basically, 
because of this, I really was incentivized to pay attention to my body. And I did this thing um, earlier this year where I decided to revolve my entire life around making sure I was getting enough sleep and eating properly. And those were my non-negotiables. I was like, even if I don't get enough work done, I have to go to bed at this time. Like I forced myself to like do that and it actually worked miracles because instead of like turning me into a sensor, which I was afraid of, it actually got me um, into feeling balanced and feeling like I was able to think more clearly and see things more neutrally. And so I really do think that like for um, ENFP or just any ENP, having SI, like all, I used to think of it as this is my memory archive. And so I'm so grateful that like, I remember all my experiences, my memories have led to me being able to make all these like intuitive conclusions. When in reality, it's also the fact that my body is the wellspring for me to like see the world as clearly as possible and not get stuck in certain memory threads that my SI can like take me down. So I think integrating SI for an ENP is more so valuing the importance of understanding how the physical body relates directly to feeding yeah. our intuition. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So what um, do you think, Bruni? Yeah. I agree. Um, I was thinking about what to say and um, you know, the couple things that I will repeat. So I sleep a lot now. Um, uh, it's non negotiable, right? So even though I'm not as productive or not as in bouncy land, I think that when you mature and get a, you know, it's a big map, right? So we're, when you have satiated that map over time by learning and delving into the you know, the endless links, you know, going down, down the spirals of thought that you're looking for. This one makes me think of this. Like over time, you kind of feel like I've kind of touched upon many things already. I don't really need to go there anymore. It's okay. You know, we're, we're generalists. So it's a good thing where we don't have to dive too deep most of the time, hopefully. Um, and after a while, that map is kind of like, I, I use like the video game metaphor. Have you ever played games where it's like, a map and it's cloudy, but you have to explore it first to reveal the map. So when we reveal it multiple times, we have this clear map of what's going on, but then certain parts become more vivid, more detailed, and that's kind of your intuition will guide you. Okay, I keep on going back to this place. It seems like even though I want to guide myself to go here because of novelty and possibility, I know in my heart what I'm directed towards going towards more and that I don't need to um, satiate extrovert intuition as much as I used to like this urge of just bouncing around for the sake of bouncing around it, it, it kind of squashes itself for hopefully within our 30s and 40s maybe in our 50s um where yeah we need to rest because we've jumped into the pool multiple times we kind of kind of like had adventures with our thoughts and ideas and then we realize okay I'm neglecting my body so much I'm in la la land everything is not potential ideas. Everything doesn't have to be the sake of chasing ideas and information mm -hmm. to develop something because yeah. we need, right? It's not our identity. Like we think it is. We think our identity is constantly to be um, thought provoking novel, um, even maybe push people's buttons with what we say and think and do. Um, after a while, become more at peace with who you are. And that comes back to grounding and honoring your body and like eating, you know, drinking, sleeping which we tend yes. to neglect, even if we do honor and know that this is something we're supposed to do, I'm still having a hard time doing it. It's still hard Yeah, for definitely. Me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like to me, I'm like every minute, I'm not like doing ideas and contributing to the void. Um, of, the of, void. Like, <laughs> yeah, is like a minute spent. Like it reminds me of how like an ENFJ can like overgive because they see how there's so many emotional needs that need to be yeah. met. I think that ENFPs or I guess ENTPs, just any person who leads with NE can think of the world as something that's in intuitive need. We end up doing mm -hmm. intuitive labor. Like we think it's yes. our job to ideate and mm -hmm. ideate, ideate. And so, you know, an ENFJ begins to set boundaries when they're introverted thinking because for them, their dominant function is extroverted feeling and their yeah. inferior is introverted thinking. They'll go, oh, wait, I actually logically cannot handle meeting this many needs. I have my own limitations. I have my own opinions on even if people 
should expect things from me or not. Mm -hmm. And when they integrate that, they become more balanced and they become much less people pleasing, much more smart and introspective. So I think the, to parallel and bring that back, when ENFPs go, okay, I don't need to like go and save the world by brainstorming a million things. I need to just focus on making sure I stay alive for long enough for these mm -hmm. ideas to come to fruition. <laughs> um, it, is, it is an act of service to my contributions intuitively for me to sleep and such. So I think that's, yeah, like that's something I kind of hacked. I was like, oh, I do a lot of intuitive labor because I don't feel like I trust other people to also be ideating when I'm sleeping or something. Like it's like how ENFJs can almost kind of arrogantly not give other people space to also be contributing to helping the group. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah. give the world space to like let us rest and mm -hmm. let everyone else ideate and such, I think. Do you resonate with that, Boonie? Yeah, because it is a superpower for us. It really is a gift. Like, um, And that's kind of the funny thing because when people try and type me online or in groups, or my videos, they'll be like, you're so introverted, you're so chill. You know what, this oh is like God. some persona <laughs> or a presentation I have for being professional. Um, <laughs> if you meet with me in person, I'm gonna like start rolling out nonstop ideas for things you can do. And that's something that my professional colleagues love about me because I can be that person for them. I can connect all these disciplines, you know, Jane of all yeah. trades. That's my you gift. You can me now because I'm like, idea, idea. And you're like, yeah, idea, idea. Exactly. Like, you're exactly. out of your intro to tell. Yeah, because I actually exactly. have watched, I've actually watched a bunch of your videos that I've known about you for a few years because um, you've been making videos uh, dating back to when I actually got into type. I don't know if you know who I am, mm -hmm. but like, not saying you should like know. Or something, <laughs> but, like, I, I am on Megan's channel, Megan Lavota, And um, yeah, like, we've been making videos together but when i first got into type i was like watching some of your videos mm -hmm. and i i think like because i've always thought of like how all the e's they lead with an extroverted function but that mm -hmm. does not mean they act extroverted it just means they react yeah. to the world first you that totally got it i don't even have to defend myself or explain anything to you mm -hmm. um i went to a personality hacker training profile trainer and mm -hmm. um some of the trainers were trying to profile me and they kept on saying I'm an introvert, introvert and irrational. So an introvert, irrational. Um, and I forgot her name now. Um, help me identify her name. Antonia? Antonia that... typed me. I talked to her. She's like, so how'd it go? What'd you think? I said, well, some of them were typing me as INFP or INTP. And I told them that I lead with ideas and possibility. And that's kind of my strength. And so she like typed me right away. Oh, so you're INFP. I'm like, yeah, I am. I, like you didn't have to explain or you didn't even have to like convince me that I'm not a type that someone else called me. And so like, I feel very validated, accepted. But then like that perception you said about an extrovert needs to be a certain way. Like for me, I got chronic fatigue going on, dude. Like I am tired all the time. And so to kind of mm -hmm. have the burst of energy, it is a very interpersonal thing. If you put me in a room of people, I can turn it on like that. You want someone to like, take the spotlight, yeah. you know, attention uh -huh. seeking. I can yeah. do that too. But like I I'm even no I'm even noticing yeah exactly I'm even noticing like the synergy of like Tori is just listening as the I and J and we're just like no, no, the no, N I no. observation <laughs> She's like, it's, oh. it's so new to me because I don't have a lot of ENFPs on my channel mm. so that's why we're I need so to like, yeah, understand like everywhere. this yeah we're everywhere <laughs> oh, that's, that's amazing no okay so yeah Boonie so I just so yeah, I resonate with that, but what I want to validate because I am one of those more like blah, blah, blah ENFPs. I've sat at a few round tables with other ENFPs and like, like, oh, I guess like between, like, yeah, like just in the type community in the last like two months, I have met with 12 different ENFPs. There's so many flavors of us. And I don't yeah, even think, are. I don't even think Enneagram correlates whether or not you seem extroverted or not and such. I think it just comes down to what you like to do with your ideas because mm -hmm. I type people by just, are they responding to my ideas? I never go if they're talkative or not because I've met some INFJs who won't shut up mm -hmm. like, even though they're NI, NI, they won't shut up. And I met ENFJs who are so subdued, but what's happening is they are still emotionally reacting to the environment. Mm -hmm. They're just like dealing with it. And so, and, and like with ENFPs, I have a very good friend, um, shout out Christine if you're watching, 
who is also like very subdued, very shy. In groups, we look like two different types. Mm. But when I talk, 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 she talks, talk, talks back. Or I'll talk and talk and she'll say one thing every like five seconds. So she's not cutting me off necessarily, uh. but she's like adding to the idea. So I'm always like, what are you leading with? And I don't think of it mm. as seems introverted or extrovert. I go, is that person an intuitive first or if like a blah, blah, blah first? Yeah. And then, so I don't even go off like they seem STP like or blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I go, okay, what is, which one is your dominant function? What do I keep getting blasted with? And then I just like go from there. So I'm not even thinking about like E's and I's traditionally. I'm just I'm not like, either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, like, I'm not sure if this is like a legit thing, but I, there's this concept in socionics of like a subtype of, um, so for example, they are like INFJs who are the FE subtype. Mm -hmm. And so they tend to like mm -hmm. lean more heavy, heavily into FE even though they are in INFJ. Um, and I think I know some INFJs who are like that. So even though they are like technically the same personality as me, but they may have like a slightly different focus, um, if that makes sense. And also, yeah. yeah, another thing is that I feel like it's hard to type people by watching like a video of them because <laughs> for me, like when I'm talking to people I really know, I can be really talkative as well. Mm -hmm. Just right. like one on one or one to like two people. But in a group, I'm like more quiet. So that's when the introversion shows up. Yeah, like, yeah, like the circumstance. Thing. Yeah, but like in a small group, I can be like really talkative, but in a big group, I tend to be more quiet. So I feel like if people just type based on how they see you interact in one setting, that's like going to be inaccurate because mm -hmm. obviously introverts can be very talkative too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, especially when yeah. they are interested in something like passionately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like that can be very misleading. If people have typed me as ENFP, I don't know, that's like, what? Not, like none of yeah, my Yeah, and like, um, yeah. like for... Yeah, because like Megan and I run a typing service. And so I designed the questions for the typing form and they're all qualitative. So people have to answer on their own. Mm -hmm. But what I'm looking for is because the whole questions cover a variety of scenarios. They go into your past. They go mm -hmm. into your present. They go into the present, present, like <laughs> as you're typing this and then the future and like all these things. So I'm mapping who they are in all facets of life. And like, even then I'm also like making sure that like, each question builds on each other and like i'm just like looking at the whole range and then mm -hmm. we also get a video for more accuracy but like yeah like one snapshot i'm like dude people are in different moods all the time too yep. and like but i also understand why people sometimes are trying to type you if it's as if you don't know yourself because at the end of the day some people are mistyped based on no, their little 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 line, i understand how yeah. people feel the burden of like citizen typing or something but like <laughs> it, it is like hard because if you're learning and also trying to be skeptical it's like how do you do that? It takes like mm -hmm. years and years. People don't for have sure. the patience for that. So yeah. Right. Oh man. I just want to make a parallel uh, with mental um, health stuff. I'm wondering. Oh, sorry. Oh. No, no, no. Go oh. ahead. Has no, no, nobody to talk. Me. Go ahead. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to talk about the typing service first? Oh, typing service? No. I was, I was not. Say, no, I was, was gonna, I was going to mention that. Like, that's why I get really irked with uh, therapy and insurance policies because when you go through insurance to get therapy services in the United States, they submit your diagnosis right away when they don't even know you. Like it's a quick introduction, maybe an interview. They don't even, they're not even comfortable with you yet, but they have to get this stuff done to reimburse. And so that's just like my caveat. If you can go around insurance, can you find someone who do it without it? That would really help them get to know you and really um, diagnose you in a better way, which I'm, Kind of against diagnosis in the first place but it's a way for him to them to write the treatment plan so um yeah. you're not your diagnosis you're not your diagnosis okay oh, yeah I totally yes agree i agree my personal passion is i want to get to the point because i do do tarot readings and i have this is i guess controversial but because i really like i can start to see people's functions based on like how they're describing their problem to me based mm -hmm. on me talking them i start to see the functions pop up not enough for me to like be like this is the one out of the 16 types but i try to like give advice to where in theory if that person was a mistyped person who was mm -hmm. really strong on thinking they were blah 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 i could still give them advice for how they should integrate quietly having my opinion of like how that would work but 
it's kind of like this idea that like at the end of the day, I think it's more helpful for the community to move away from diagnosing your this type. Mm -hmm. As philo philosophically, people look at type differently. Mm -hmm. um, and going toward how can we use the functions, all eight of them, as tools for self-growth, no matter where you're starting. It's obviously good to know where you're starting from, but it's like at the end of the day, if your journey is to try to get better at the FI, no matter if you think you're a TP or TJ or whatever, I think that would be the ideal. Like the ideal is for everyone to be aspiring toward balancing all of them in some way. Yeah. I think that's the only thing I could see curing a culture of trying to quickly like type someone and get this quick validation hit. Cause it's like, so what if like she's an ENFP and she's mistyped? Is that gonna make you feel better about your stupid life? Like, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, actually I agree with the whole like integrating all functions, even though obviously there are some functions that we naturally are not going to be in touch with. But I feel like I learned so much from even functions that are not my own. Mm -hmm. So I do have like a lot of like um, people who use FI in my life, like my ISSP friends, I feel like I learned a lot from them just by looking at how FI works. Because as FE users, as you know, Megan Laboda, um, we tend to like focus too much on other people and what they think, I mean, how they feel and so on. And that can be really draining. And I feel like having FI is like um, learning at least to value what we feel and kind of knowing when to set the boundaries is so useful, even though I don't technically like use it in a like conscious way and also like even our um point of list resistance which i'm not sure if you're familiar with but for you it's ti um and for me it's te i feel like even that um even though it's like a weakest function that is not even in our stack it can help us to really understand um how other people think like for me mm -hmm. i have a problem with like practicality sometimes and with like being able to be self-disciplined and I do see value in other people being self-disciplined even though I myself may not like necessarily have that function oh yeah yeah that makes sense definitely yeah, I feel I, like it is yeah like <laughs> I feel like oh, we can talk to each other <laughs> I like so a big thing I always talk about is how when I got into type, and I, I guess like I've just been interviewed a lot lately, but I always talk about how when I got into type, I typed myself by my blind spot, point of least resistance, polar or whatever, um, mm -hmm. being introverted thinking, because I was like, oh, that is what my mom has shamed me about my whole life. And no, like, yes, it's gay mom, I watched a video. Yeah, yeah, I guess if you watched, you'll be like, oh yeah, your mom, your ISFJ mom, like, yeah. But um, I, I think though, like it is helpful to me to have an idea and a blueprint for like interpreting the narratives of my life because for me, a lot of my trauma in my life, uh, lowercase t that is not like capital T, but like lowercase t, like small paper cuts throughout my life that have become gaping wounds. A lot of it was from naturally being very drawn to um, extroverted feelers, and FE users who would never really understand my FI, and especially growing up, like most people don't like that stuff, especially in the Asian community and yeah. also in younger people. So like, I just kind of grew up and was like, I don't think anyone apparently is as dramatic as me. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna just have to tough it out. And so when I found out about type and I found out, oh, I don't have TI, but everyone else I knew growing up did. And that's why I feel so stupid all the time. Mm -hmm. Then I was really able to like really validate myself. And I think that at the end of the day, that was really pivotal to me developing better and self-growing. So at the same time, as I would prescribe that for the community as a whole, we should all aspire towards our eight functions. I also think like, I understand like all the people that are really trying to go back and forth and figure out what their functions are. But I think that they have to be willing to like get away from stereotypes like, oh, because I talk a lot like Crystal, then I must be an ENFP. It's like, mm -hmm. no. yeah. Cause then you could also not talk a lot and still be an ENFP like Booney. So yeah, I think that's hard. But yeah. to go back to how the intention of this video is actually SI. about <laughs> yeah, SI. SI. Yeah, about that. Um, yeah, I'm actually I curious think... about uh, the two of you, like your reaction to like SJ types. I'm wondering if your reaction to them changes um, as you get older, or does it remain like similar throughout? Mm. Gosh, it's funny because as an ENFP, I would never say that I had a consistent 
a reaction to SJ types compared to honestly a stronger feeling towards FJ types. Mm -hmm. I had way more issues with FJs yeah. throughout my life than SJs because I actually romantically fell for mostly SJ guys, which is surprising to people because they're like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm no, surprised. all of my biggest, most iconic crushes like for a long time were SJs. Um, and my mom is an SJ. And I would say that like, I felt very shamed for uh, not having good sensing by the whole world. So like SJs are yeah, just a cherry. I, I am shamed for that too. <laughs> like I'm just I'm like, what? NFP, but I'm shamed for not having enough sensing too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think it like came down to it was a mixed bag where sometimes they'd be so nitpicky I would want to die, or they'd be helpful in pointing out like what I was missing with all my NE. But it would totally mm -hmm. depend on my mom's mood that day because if she was in a patient mood, she'd be so helpful, and if she wasn't, she'd be so bitchy. So like, you know, eyes of Jays, like, yeah, they're temperamental, but whatever. Um, I think it does depend because also. Millennial SJ peers, when I say I fell for a lot of SJ guys, they weren't like all misers who just want to like work at a fucking like software company. Some of them are artists, some of them are activists. Like they really do have a knack for, I think, being able, like, especially when they're young, like right now, culturally, SJs can seem like intuitives if they mm -hmm. take the test because they really value their intuition. It's basically like why I valued my thinking a lot growing up in Asian American high achieving culture right. on the West Coast. Right. So like, I think as my general reaction to SJs is I have quite a few friends who are SJs. It all depends on like, if you grew up similarly and valuing similar things, mm -hmm. like you will just get along because SJs who are like taught that intuition is good for making friends and getting behind social causes. They're not going to, be like those old, like maybe immigrant elderlies who are just like, what's wrong with you that you don't have like a steady job? Mm -hmm. I think that can be kind of part of it. But then the diverse fabric is like, I have all these friends who are like so much more validating sometimes than even NJs and so much better helping me refine my intuition because they point out the details with better SE than I do to remind me to stay grounded. So yeah. SI? Huh? You mean SI? Yes. Oh, okay. So, Boonie, what's your uh, experience with SJs being like? Um, I think I masked more to... I, I was a high achiever student in school, um, straight A's all the time. And so I don't think many ENFPs can relate with that experience. Some can. Um, but I also think that... I, also, I, re yeah. I, re I know what you mean. I haven't uh, met that many. Yeah, I took like 13 APs in high school and like mm -hmm. I tried hard and I was like a political journalist and then I was like this is all stupid <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I, yeah but like like then I see all these ENFPs a lot of white ENFPs who were encouraged to be all feely and stuff and I'm just like no like right. I was not allowed to I had to right. fucking perform and it's like a lot yeah mm -hmm. so the the layer of collectivism that we have to go through in being a hybrid in America it, it was hard for me to balance. So instead of honoring the idealism, the need for independence, I stuffed it down to the back burner for a really long time. I was like an ISTJ for a really long time. Like do whatever was done, dutiful daughter, you know, um, be quiet, don't speak unless spoken to. And that's part of the presentation that I have because it doesn't leave you completely. You know, that's my upbringing. Um, I do honor elders to a certain degree, my ancestors, I know, I think that's very important. And yet this dichotomous self that you have when it comes to being um, a hybrid collectivist American is difficult to manifest sometimes. It's difficult to defend or to explain to people who don't even come from the collectivist perspective. And so when they do see you, it's like, okay, you're um, demure, you're, you're a meek Asian female, and so you must not be ENFP. So for me, it's like this yeah. internalization and fighting of having to defend my, myself. And yet th mm -hmm. there's different layers of cognition, different layers of identity that people don't consider sometimes. And culture is a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. And so like when you put in neurodiversity, cognition, um, even giftedness and culture, my presentation is different. You know, my identification yeah. with SJ culture is stronger too sometimes because I do think 
structure is important. I think tradition, when terms of honoring your ancestors, that's important. Like I think about my grandparents every day. I talk to them, you know, I pray to my gods about what's going on in my life. And yet some people might think that, you know, that tradition is kind of backwards. It, or like, like tradition means you must be an SJ because you care right. about tradition. Yeah, exactly. Like, so, yeah. so that's my holding on to tradition. And yet being progressive to me, it means standing up for the, the rights and accept the representation Presentations of people of color, um, making sure that when in the realms of like typology, we need more people of color to speak. Mental health, we need more people. Geek culture, we need more women and people of color to speak up yeah. because it's just like not very melanated. And so, especially Asian women, our voices are quieted all the time. And so, I have that again internalization and personal fight with speaking up and being feisty. And yet that's not my personality, you know, mm -hmm. but when I'm in my family system, the SJ family system, because almost everyone is an SJ in my family system, um, mm -hmm. I'm seen as independent and outspoken. So like, I am so confused with what people see in the greater dominant culture. Which I'm, is very NE to not know how people see you because it's so multifaceted and you're thinking right. everyone's in consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait, also, how old are you? 37. Gotcha. Wow, so yeah, yeah. I thought you were like late twenties or something. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, okay. I I actually wanted to comment because I'm 25, so I'm like a decade younger, and I wanted to say that yeah, like my, we can hear this out. Yeah. So I wanted to say that like uh, growing up in like the late 2000s or early 2010s, like for me, like. I'm now like a tarot reader and I'm trying to figure out a way to promote the spiritual side of, of typology. Mm -hmm. like that is like my right. identified profession. Like th I'm three years out of college and I went to college in the Midwest despite growing up on the West Coast. And I saw, and I worked as a journalist. So I had an opportunity to live in eight states before I turned 23, like in my life. Wow. And I think that like, so I don't identify with like SJ culture, but I think that I had the privilege of like my parents were slightly later and like just by luck of the draw, I just like managed to somehow not drink the Kool-Aid because all my classmates work for the big tech companies now because I was huge in my suburb growing up. And I think that I just managed to like warm out, but also at the same time, like when I was in college, I started to read tarot cards and learn about astrology. And now, right now, that stuff is like huge, like mm -hmm. spiritual awakenings and things. Those are really big. And I think like literally me just being born 12 years after you, like gave me maybe a different experience, even in the intuitive environment of the world, just thinking about the esoteric more. Mm -hmm. And like, for me, it's like, it's cool now to be NE. Everyone comes to me to hold space, but then I see ENFPs who are like your age, because you're not the only, I don't really know you, but like, I know ENFPs who are older. Mm -hmm. They don't feel, they feel like a lot of them had to just go to corporate. There was no way, unless you wanted to be a hippy dippy living out in like freaking like North Dakota, like by yourself. Like, it's like, there is no way to both be an intuitive dom and be cool. And now it's mm -hmm. becoming cool. So right. I really want to hold space for the fact that like, because when we have SI, a big thing about us is we become highly or not become, we just grow up like highly impressionable because we never forget how those sensory events impact mm -hmm. us, impacts how we hold ourselves, how we do our lives. And for me, I don't have like this disdain for SI because growing up, I was like SI, my sensory function is the reason I'm alive today and mm -hmm. I will honor that. And so I, when I see structures, I also don't resent them because I'm like mm -hmm. keeping records of the past historians and all the really smart intuitive SJs are the people that can take past events and remix them and contextualize them. And that mm -hmm. has inspired and formed my work as a tarot reader and also my political opinions a lot because I look into the historical context of every single thing. I lived in Missouri during Ferguson. Like I just have seen mm -hmm. a lot. And I think it's because my SI is filled with all these archives of like understanding different experiences. So I think that at the same time, SI seems very archaic and overly like structured and like has a stick up its mm -hmm. ass. I think the, the lessons that those structures can teach us are things that NE DOMs are really good at like extracting and then applying to make a better future, not forgetting what the mm -hmm. past also taught us. So I think right. we're actually 
even better predictions because we can predict the limitations of reality mm -hmm. now and how we got here today. So we're somewhere at the intersection of NI and SI, so yeah. Okay, so I have something really exciting to talk about because you were just giving me a really good information and feedback energy. So, okay, so <laughs> since the generational shift or like the gap is so um, apparent, like it's actually exactly 12 years apart, right? That's like a powerful number for um, angel numbers, you know, like spiritual numbers, six and 12, right? So it, it means something, we're connected for a reason. So like I work in education, I've worked in education. Um, I use TE to see systemic rules for a thing, right? And my my causes are edu education, representation, equity, and access to education, um, and making sure that people are seen for their cognitive strengths and not being identified for services just because they're a certain ethnic identity or because their cognitive difference is, you know, somehow difficult for a teacher to teach to, like ADHD, autism, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, um, and like. Yeah. Right. So when um, I reference my SI, my archives are pretty negative when it comes to representation mm -hmm. and having people mm -hmm. having a voice. So I'll use yes. my story, right, for that. And then the cool thing is that I use the reference knowing that if I infiltrate a system that's already in place, even though it is archaic, somehow I'll gather enough information to tear it down from the inside out. And that's why I do go yes. into the system. Yes. I don't agree with it. I, I stay with mm -hmm. it until as long as I can, because things perpetuate the past. The past repeats itself over and over again. And mm -hmm. so if we gather enough information to know what is consistent, what people believe, why the authority, uh, people in authority constantly dismiss or overrule those who have the least voice and power, you know, that's something I'm willing to put myself into to do as an SI. That's how I thought about going to Missouri. I felt like willing to do that to go into Missouri because right. I grew up right. in like a liberal bubble, but I was like, if anyone can make it work in that quote oppressive place, mm -hmm. I I can't. And I did. I, right. I like somehow thrived. Yeah. So I really resonate too with like, well, I do have negative SI, but that has never stopped me from being adventurous enough exactly. to venture out and get more NE because I think mm -hmm. NE DOMs, even though they can't get stuck in the past sometimes, all, we're aware of we need more intuition to water down mm -hmm. how hard it was and how much we remember it. I think that can be an advantage over being an INFP because we have that NE mm -hmm. leading us to go and yeah. gather more, to go and find more. Even right. in the worst person environment, we can find the light, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Because the system is huge. The system is huge. And we're kind of selfish in a certain way where we use ourselves to experiment, right? We use ourselves as yes. a I am my point, best experiment. Right? Like my experience yes. will be reflected by others. They will understand more because it's personal to me. Like my fight mm -hmm. is your fight. So that's why I think it's powerful. Like the way we gather more information that will lead to more optimism because we're kind of like insatiable, even though we have yeah. to grab ourselves. We know, we we know what to do with it. And, mm -hmm. and our SI just per perpetuates it because it's like, it's like, I will like, I'm like, I will rewrite my negative view of the world. I cannot sit here for one second longer and not think that there's possibility out there mm -hmm. for me to find hope. Cause whenever I'm sad, I'm like, there is hope, but where is it? And right. where am I going to go and find it? And I go out and I travel and I do all these things and I find it again. And I'm like, that's it. And then I mm -hmm. take it now and I try to preach it back to people, people trying to use my bad blast and like give it to people. So right. yeah, I really resonate with, like what you're saying about it, yeah. Yeah, people believe you because you've lived it, you've walked it. Like you're not just like trying to preach to someone from a higher level of authority. No, you're you're an equal. Yeah, like with NE, it's like we can flow to figure out how someone could possibly understand us, and we know how to intuitively be at that level or be at that level. Like mm -hmm. either way, it's like easy for us to ebb and flow, mm -hmm. and. At the end of the day, I remember all the bad stuff, but I also do have access to all the good stuff in the SI too. I just have to remember to activate it, but it's all there. So yeah. Yeah, actually one one observation that I have is that I realized that um, even because I grew up in Asia, so I realized that because Asian culture is definitely like very SJ focused, at least like from where I come from and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like people in who are Asian in general just have better grasp of SI because mm. even for me I don't have SI um, as my main function but I still know what it's like because I'm kind of surrounded by that. That is true, so, that, that is true yeah. for every for every SPNJ 
I know because I love Asian Americans in my life. That's totally true. That's so true. Yeah. They all know how to freaking, they all know and value that Memorize. stuff. Memorize. <laughs> We, yeah, we can and never live in our parents' uh -huh. basement. Like, why we can't do? Come on, like, no. We have to do something practical. Yeah. I feel like the interesting thing is that um, when I look at SI, I feel like I can see where there are flaws and where there are positives. So I kind of see both because I, I mean, growing up with F, uh, SJs, but when I went to America, um, I felt like some people are like very dismissive of SI and. Mm -hmm. I think it's because they probably are like, I mean, usually they are like dominant intuitives and or like um, intuitives who are using it in the second function and they tend to dismiss SI because they probably see it as like useless or, you know, some kind of like really <laughs> old um, function. It's kind of like that, not gonna lie. <laughs> and sometimes sound like I'm an SJ because, I mean, to them, because they have never like, maybe use SI or maybe they're not familiar with people who use SI. I feel like sometimes I have to defend SI because I'm like, you know, <laughs> I have to in certain areas, but not like defend it fully, but more of seeing how some parts of it can actually benefit um, society, like the whole structure thing. I don't think that um, people should just like completely neglect like the idea of order. I mean, even though like, I mean, NJ, but I still think that to some degree, like law and order is important. And yeah, like I, yeah, I think that the people that can somehow, serious. yeah, people that can somehow fully buy into like our anarchism without examining like yeah. the trauma they have around that concept are very much not POC. But yeah, exactly. Um, we haven't had the luxury to be able to think for ourselves. And like, and I think that also because in Asia, like SI order is like such a like government thing. Like it's like yeah. culturally passed it down. Too much. Yeah, it can be too much. To where like it becomes ingrained in the soft power too of how the people perceive if the world is a safe place or not. And I think that SI can get a bad rap for be especially in the spiritual world, a lot of NJs kind of seem to associate any SI with scarcity, which is why mm. like they, they'll be like, no, like, we don't need to worry about all these earthly things if you, like, believe in God or, like, abundance of attraction. It's like, no, like, that is not how you freaking, you can't bypass your human body, sis. Yeah. A lot of, like, white people's spirituality honestly do that, and it makes me very angry because it's very excluding and often classes to, like, say that stuff. Like, I'm just, like, you are not honoring the sacredness to some degree of some structures, not saying all structures, but structure yeah. existing, like period. We need to honor that concept above all, which is very, I guess, anything to say. Like the concept of structure must be honored. <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> like, like people are like, like, I, cause I'm like, I cannot be a good intuitive and make the impact I want to unless I honor the sensing mm -hmm. and the sensing always has intuition and threaded in it. Like I really yeah. do see the synergy between N and S and F and T. And if you don't have one, then you're not integrating yourself properly, mm -hmm. even before you do shadow work. Like, it's like, what? Like, I just think that all these NPs that are like, so into resenting their SJ parents don't realize that the SI they see in themselves is ironically keeping them back from seeing right. like the awesomeness of just SI, which is more than just being controlled or something. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know, like my relationship to discipline even changed once I got in touch with my conceptual idea of discipline for me like discipline for me is I do one thing that centers me every day and that thing can be so many different like manifestations but it has to be accomplishing the same way for me to obtain peace and so mm -hmm. like I'm just like just have to treat SI you can't look at how SJ does SI and just be like well I'm never going to be that so that's wrong it's like okay mm -hmm. like, you have to the right. concept of sensing is really important so yeah, yeah. I'm really passionate <laughs> yes it's like rejecting a part of you you cannot feel whole if you're rejecting something that's core to who you are just because you don't truly understand it doesn't mean it's a bad thing you know it's, it's inside of you for a reason it's your whole part of you like you said part of shadow work it, it, like and the one thing that you do it's cool because we can redefine it or 
focus on whatever, whatever it is that we need to do to perceive it as a thing for us. You know, if we can, we're, we're intuitive dominance. So we can be creative with how we define that, how we yes. use it. You know, like my we're one not thing. Gonna dis- yeah. We're not going to discriminate against what we're defining, even yes. structure. Exactly. <laughs> structure is good. So like all the intuitive dominance who are having our time. Hey, I've been there too. I still have a hard time. And yet when I find that you can give yourself this much room and credit to do something small, that's when it's a big deal. Cause like when we have to make it yeah. a big, big production because we're so creative and like maybe explosive with how we do things sometimes, um, <laughs> bite-sized pieces. My one thing yeah. was to drink a protein shake today because I need protein. I'm like, we yeah, just one here, thing. you know? Yeah, <laughs> one thing. One thing. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm like, I will find the abundance in the scarcity. Like I will find a way to remix even what's not there or like what seems limited or something. Mm-hmm. Like I've been able to be like, you know what? It, it was kind of fun to listen to my mom. Cause even if I don't disagree with her, what about what she's saying is still salvageable? Like mm-hmm. I think of that all the time. If I'm like, right. ew, I'm like, well, what's not you then? Like, mm-hmm. and I go okay. into it right. and I separate. So that's that the thing that we get. Advice. from. Yeah, that's the thing we get from being intuitive dominance. We're kind of ostracized and seen as outliers, freaks, aliens all the time. That we be, we polarize ourselves. Like I can't possibly belong to society because they've been so wrong. I've been so wrong. <laughs> I'm a type four. I'm a type four. I really I'm four too, right? Like, like, oh my god, it's a four party. So like they they. <laughs> they have ingrained this message, but we have the choice now. Once we have that awareness, right? It's a spiritual journey. You have to have, make that choice. You really have to commit to yourself. Who cares what they think about you? We're weird, okay? We're fucking weird. And there's nothing we can do about it. Like honor it, take ownership, completely control it. This is yours. So when people have internalized and like shaped and kind of toxified everything inside of you, like they won for a really long time. Don't let them win. Don't let them win. Like you get to take ownership exactly. one thing at a time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> also, I hate to cut this short, guys, but I actually got to get going. Booney, I did friend you on Facebook. I'm not sure if you check it very often, but I have to say I'm a huge fan because I've been following your videos um, about being ENFP because I was like, oh, another Asian ENFP, like back in the day, like 20, like 14 or something. So like, shout out to you for really helping inspire my journey. Anyways, um, we should definitely connect sometime. I- love to talk more um thank you so much for having me tori um i will be talking to you again soon so yeah okay. anyways i gotta go but bye for okay. now guys. bye please talk more i'm gonna watch the rest of the video later bye okay. bye okay bye okay we have like eight more minutes actually mm-hmm. i wanted to touch on this like reverse idea because we have been talking about how um people i think in america are like not very familiar with si and so I want to talk about how kind of in the Asian context where it's like the reverse, where people kind of overly value SI. And so you, I'm sure you have the experience as well in your family. And it's funny because obviously like people who are SJs, they also have NE, but they're somehow like not, um, I feel like sometimes they also repress a part of themselves and reject a part of themselves. So it's like the opposite situation from us mm-hmm. where, we can reject like our sensing side. And from what I noticed growing up is that a lot of sensors in my um, like area, they reject their intuition. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering like, do you have experiences with like maybe um, SJs who learn to value intuition or they just like never really get like the hang of it because of culture or how people are around them? So I've had, extra experience observing SJs actually impulsively use their intuition, um, specifically NE. So when they're stressed out, they'll do things like reorganize their house. They'll sell all their furniture, right? They'll sell everything, um, go on a shopping spree, switch up their wardrobe because they were stressed out for a little bit too long. And they'll on a whim buy plane tickets to travel on the other side of the country, meet somebody random. And for me, that's like, again, the polarity of change. We go to the extreme before we reach the, the middle ground. Um, yeah, I think the overdrive. It, exactly. And so I think that when I watch people do that, there is this, so the, the, the cycles of change is kind of like, 
it swings back and forth. And then over time, the swinging gets slower, right? Because you practiced enough. And so when you have an SJ or anyone who's trying to balance the polar opposite function when they're stressed, um, the more often I see it, the more often I notice that the swinging does get slower and more, um, more less of an intensity. And, and so um, the, the combining of the two, I think they, it can be possible. I just think that it, it's something that sometimes when people tell them what is wrong with you, you're so impulsive, like, why can't you be more structured or like you usually are? That's like what we do sometimes in intuitives, like we'll start being so random for the sake of maintaining the role of being the NE dominant or intuitive dominant that we forget who we are. Like, wait a minute, my role and my life journey was at this point and people are telling me that I'm supposed to be this way. Like I believe them. So you have to like forget that and go back to where you left off because so we're very impressionable. I think we're all impressionable in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And part of like watching an SJ person grow to embody both the intuition and the sensing is, it's an honor to see. Um, as long as they've done the personal work of not taking anything personal, like um, the criticisms of what their subjective views of what people are saying, you know, like who cares what other people are saying? They think you're, um, you know, you, you know what you're doing for, it's for a reason. You know, if, if you can talk to someone to kind of think out loud and process why, maybe even not even why, because most people don't know why they're doing something, like just to process the act of doing something, I think that can lead to more of a, a settling of everything like it's just more self-love really to balance both yeah and i think it's the problem comes when people like place their identity too much on like how people already see them mm -hmm. so obviously we are seen through our dominant function first so that's why people have like a lot of blockage when they try to develop even even their tertiary function they can have like this problem because they are like oh people see me a certain way and then I have to like constantly play this role mm -hmm. and obviously that's like going to lead to a lot of issues because um, without the balancing thing it can actually lead to people not being able to achieve like what they want or just I guess not being fulfilled mm -hmm. and I'm wondering like um, as a last topic since we are reaching an hour but um, do you think like SJs uh, show like a certain respect towards you like in your family? Because obviously like um, I feel like subconsciously NE is still an aspirational function, even though like maybe consciously they're not like aware of it or even see it as like strange, but technically, you know, they are still kind of, it's still part of them, but weaker. I think that when I'm able to grow myself and subdue my FI without taking things personally, then I do see the the reverence for my extroverted intuition in people in my family. Um, so I think it's kind of like this, this marrying and dance of the larger and stronger my self-awareness and acceptance is, the stronger their um, admiration for my NE can be because uh, it's really, um, I guess it's it's a, a a loving experience to see that my intuition is appreciated. So because my advocacy for education is part of who I am, I, I try my best to make sure that the children in my family get the educational needs that they deserve. And, and I'll speak up and identify things that maybe the school psychologist or the counselor or the teacher did not understand or weren't willing to take extra efforts or time to identify because they're busy, I get that. And so I'll put myself in that position to be the bad guy or advocate within my voice as a calm person, because I, I think that, that you know, personality wise, I, I think that composure is important to meet people where they're at and not push buttons because when you someone's defensive, they're not gonna, they're not gonna listen to you. They're not gonna understand at all. And so yeah. um, when it comes to like, my role to help people and speak out for the misunderstood within my family and just make sure people value playfulness. I think that's something that I think over time when they're able to deal with their life stresses and see that I'm in a place of peace too, it, it does look like they appreciate and respect it. So it's like more like when you become um, kind of better at like, I guess, 
being calm yourself and also like being okay with yourself, that's when they start to kind of appreciate that part of you. Yes, because I think in the past, um, maybe many, many FI users will scream out for attention, like, look at me, I'm a misunderstood, give yeah. me attention, you're hurting me, I'm vulnerable, why aren't you um, understanding my situation? And, and that is valid, it is. And yet it's so intense at times that people are not sure how to handle it. And yeah, so it can that's push people away. Like, it can. It can yeah. push people away. It's like, I get you're in pain, but dude, I don't know what to do right now. So I'm gonna go over there. You know, so like that's our own wounding that we have to deal with. And then it's a call to action, you know, like when you're in your teens, twenties, thirties, it's hard to take ownership. Like my intensity can push people away, but it's something that will lead you towards growth, acceptance, and actually bring people closer to you. Right. Thank you so much, Rooney, for this uh, talk. So in the future, if you ever need like someone on your channel to talk about uh, intuitive stuff and Asian, like, I guess, like community and so on, feel free to like, let me know. And so once again, if you want to subscribe to Rooney, I would uh, also put her channel down in the description box along with Crystal's. So thank you so much for this talk. Oh, thank you. I, can, I look forward to it. Bye. Yeah.